This video explains the concept of abstraction, one of the ten key concepts of the Australian curriculum, digital technologies. Its intended audience is teachers who want to know more about abstraction and to have some handy examples for their students. The definition of digital technologies in the glossary is a process of reducing complexity to formulate generalised fundamental ideas or concepts removed from specific details or situations. Let's unpack this. A definition from a dictionary gives us some inkling of what abstraction may mean when it says dealing with ideas rather than events. And if we look at this series of kangaroo images, it gives us some insight into abstraction. As we move from the left to the right, we see less of a particular type of kangaroo to the essence of kangarooness. The photo of a big red kangaroo on the left gives way to an 1865 engraving of a kangaroo to a roadside image that all Australians will recognise. Any kangaroo will cause a problem if you run into one at speed on the road, so if we want to warn drivers that kangaroos are present, it's best to remove all the things that are irrelevant, such as the type of kangaroo, the colour and so forth, leaving us just with the idea of a kangaroo. Wikipedia tells us that abstract art uses a visual language of shape, form, colour and line to create a composition which may exist with a degree of independence from visual references in the world. This image is an example. There's a tendency towards generalisation here. The artist wants us to see the riverness, the bridgeness and the cityness. It's the idea of a busy city, rather like the idea of a kangaroo. Indeed, abstract artist Jay Musa wrote it's far better to capture the glorious spirit of the sea rather than to paint all of its tiny ripples. We're generalising when we abstract. Railway lines are abstractions, or railway line maps at least are abstractions. When we want to go somewhere in a city by metro or train, we really don't care whether we're on a bridge or we've got to go through a tunnel or when we cross a river or even if there is a river. We just want to know what line we should be on and which direction we should be headed. Likewise with mud maps, another example of abstraction. We get only the information that we need. We don't need to know how far it is to Jono's from Wongal. We don't need to know that. We only need to know how to get there. However, as with any term, when we try to explain abstraction by using examples of images or railway lines or mud maps, the comparison will only go so far. So what does abstraction mean in a computational thinking context? How will my students experience it? Firstly, some background. In computational thinking, abstraction can refer to a variety of things, such as how we represent sounds, numbers, text, video, or procedures. So let's look at making a milkshake. Let's take 200 ml of milk, a scoop of ice cream, and 10 ml of strawberry flavour and mix it up. That will make a strawberry milkshake. If we want a chocolate milkshake or a vanilla milkshake, we need to use different sets of instructions. Or do we? We could also say to take 200 ml of milk, a scoop of ice cream, and 10 ml of flavouring of your choice and mix. Abstraction means that one instruction can cover a lot of options. The same process works for any type of milk and any flavour. The advantage in coding is if the logic is easier to understand, then maintenance, development and security, seeing where the vulnerabilities may lie, are easier, quicker to implement and less risky. The advantage in thinking more generally is we can see the important bits by abstraction and leave the detail which may distract us from our main purpose. We become better big picture thinkers. Here we have a level in a computer game. We could represent this with a number, say 2, but it would be better represented by a variable that we'll call game level. The variable can take a variety of different values, in this case 2, 
as we get better at the game. So we don't need a different screen for each level attained. We can use the same screen and show the current value of the game level variable alongside the word level. You can see the process here. I've taken the process still further to show how all of these bits of data are represented right the way down to whether or not a switch is on or a switch is off. We're going from a high level of abstraction to a low level of abstraction to in fact the reality that the abstraction usually leaves to one side. Now like any abstraction, their very nature makes some assumptions. If I ask a chef to separate two eggs, we'll get whites and yolks in separate bowls. But if no one's heard this expression before, we might end up with a different output. Here's an abstraction of an ATM machine program. Only eight statements. Of course, each has a heap of stuff happening in the background to make it happen, like we saw with the earlier example of the game level, but we've abstracted the program to these eight statements which describe the behavior of the ATM. Sometimes we need to create more than a set of statements to see what the solution to a problem might look like, though. And here's an example. Abstractions are more than just looking at variables. They can help us understand and simplify problems. For example, this is a classic problem called the Knight's Tour that requires the Knight chess piece to visit every square from 1 to 12. Now, the problem is that the Knight can only move in certain patterns. It can only move two steps and then one, or one step and then two. Now, we could trial and error this, we could try all sorts of different ideas, but it's simpler to build a model of the Knight's Tour, and it's called a graph in this case, to show what connections can be made from every square, sort of reversing the approach to the problem. Let's have a look. So I can connect from number one, I can get to number seven, I can also get to number six, I can get from one to number nine. From number two, I can go to three. From number two, I can also go to eight. And I can also go to 10. So using this process, we can build up a pattern, a graph of what the connections are from one to the other. It looks pretty messy, but if we rearrange this, we get something that makes it a lot clearer. This is the same graph. The solution now becomes a lot easier to see how we might solve it. We could go from 1 to 9 and then to 3 to 11 to 5 and to 7. And from 7 we'll go to 12, 4, 10, 2, 8 and 6, which allows us then to return to 1. Graphs are a common way of looking at relationships between data and enabling the computer programmer or the designer of the solution to come up with a simple solution. Abstraction helps us manage the complexity of computer systems and the problem that we're trying to solve. It also helps us in planning and to write clean code which is easier to maintain. So with abstraction we can reduce complexity, we can formulate generalized fundamental ideas or concepts, and we can remove specific details or situations to make it easier to solve a problem.